Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the new 2023 Titanium Artisan Cutlery Proponent with that gorgeous high polished blade. This is something that they have kind of teased here and there with a few different models and I really hope they keep doing it because wow, it looks fantastic. Now this is absolutely a higher polish than what we normally see on their satin finished blades, especially in there in that fuller, wow. Artisan Cutlery has really come a long ways over the years, uh, especially you know here recently uh, checking out their release of the BOA. I was absolutely blown away at the full mirror polish that they got on that uh, super premium edition. And it's really nice to see that we're getting, you know, a version of that on some of their, you know, regular premium knives. Uh, in some cases, you know, we're getting this on knives that, you know, a lot of people would say really don't cost all that much money. Now, this is still an expensive knife, but the reason I want to cover this knife again is number one, this is the newest variant of their most premium version of this knife, which I have never actually covered. All the other previous uh, versions have been more budget stuff, right? Um, but uh, I, I really um, wanted to showcase this because I think it's for people who like the really chunky aesthetic and, you know, it's, I think it's obvious that you don't really gain any sort of major utilitarian advantage with larger, wider, thicker materials, right? And a larger, wider, thicker blade. It's just cool factor. A cool factor that I completely and totally understand. In fact, I purposefully chase stuff like this for my collection alongside other things. But this is probably the least expensive premium overbuilt knife that uh, I've handled. A lot of the other stuff comes in 50, 100, maybe 150 more at the bare minimum. So this is pretty cool. And of course, it does come with the secondary, uh, you know, quarter inch stop pin. So while it is just a titanium frame lock, a thick titanium frame lock, but just a titanium frame lock at base, you can actually lock the blade out completely so that in the event that the uh, frame lock does disengage, the blade's not going anywhere. It, it can't disengage at that point, right? Um, so that's cool that they ha still have this feature. Now this knife is available in a few different variations, including the one you're seeing here. And this knife comes in, the one you're seeing here is 200 bucks, um, which I think is pretty fair to say right at the beginning. I think that's pretty amazing considering the quality you're getting here. Um, but they do have less expensive variants of this knife um, that, I mean, quite a bit less expensive. I'll link them all right down below. You should be able to pick up a bunch of different variants. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Artisan Color for providing this knife for review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This really isn't any different outside of it being a frame lock. I mean, the standard versions of this knife are liner locks, right? They have the G10 liner lock. They used to do the brass and the copper version, which, I mean, hey, by the way, ours and Cutlery, bring those back. People really like those. Um, you, there was a time where you could get a, a solid brass. I mean, it was a steel liner lock, but you could get a solid brass or solid copper ours and Cutlery proponent. Same thickness. I think the blade was, what was it? Was it D2? I can't remember. It was like 65 bucks. <laughs> pretty, pretty crazy. Um, this, uh, the whole thing really at this point, uh, their overall build quality is so much better than it used to be. I remember, and yeah, I know people always look at that pivot and they go, desert swastika. Um, you look, look up number one. It's, I mean, yeah, there are lines that kind of go in the same direction, but, but also just research the history of that symbol, right? Before we get, before we turn ourselves into emotional pretzels over a symbol, Right, just just breathe and just do a little bit of research. Discover the, the actual origin of it, right? And then ask yourself, is artisan cutlery using the pivot of a knife as propaganda? Do those puzzle pieces fit together? I just have to imagine, you know, when you're sitting around doing a puzzle, you're the person sitting there for 20 minutes trying to force two pieces together that don't go together. And somebody finally has to say, it, that it doesn't go right there. It doesn't fit, right? So just breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth, right? Anyways, the overall quality of this knife, 
and many other artists and cutlers versus, you know, three, four, five, six years ago. It's night and day. I remember seeing on old arts and cutleries, the pivot area would be frayed from whatever they were using to tighten down the pivots. Same with these little pokeball screws back here. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, the edges would be frayed because the tools they were using or the equipment they were using to fasten everything down was not fitted correctly. They've clearly taken measures to correct this. Um, on top of that, uh, I also remember... Um, and this was years ago. I remember holding artisan cutler knives that would just inexplicably rattle. Something was loose. Usually what that is is it's like a stop pin and the depth on either side of the titanium is like not quite. It's not cut. The lips of the stop pin are not cut at the exact width between the frame. And so that's in there just wiggling around, you know, and that sucks. Like it's, it's not really hurting anything as long as the stop pin is doing its job. But it bothers you if you spend, you know, I mean... Hey, even if you bought the budget one at 60 bucks, that's still a lot of money. You know, you don't want to be holding your knife and it's rattling around. You just, nobody likes that. It's rattle is not a sound of quality. It's a sound of poor tolerances. All of that's been eliminated. Um, I mean, and everything locks up completely and totally solid. On top of that, I remember their, some of their satin finishes not being, you know, perfectly uniform or consistent, right? Lines that were horizontal were not perfectly horizontal in some areas. Lines that were meant to be vertical, right? Depending on which way the belt was going, were not perfectly vertical. And sometimes cutting bevels were, bleh, you know, all, kind of all over the place. Literally all of that has been corrected. Um, I think that this, you know, there's no detent lash either. I remember detent lash being a huge problem on some older artisan cutleries. Not the case. I think the detent on this particular knife could have stood to be a, a slightly heavier, but I, I would imagine they made it a little lighter so that you could really get after those giant thumb barrels, right? And flip it out. The end result here is a $200 knife that actually feels like a $250 or $300 knife. And anybody who owns this exact version of the proponent will echo this. This is truly the most impressive version of this knife. Now again, is this knife and its design somehow more advantageous than a simple utilitarian pocket knife? No. I can't believe that I have to point that out. It should be obvious. <laughs> You're not a genius if you can recognize this. But there's always there's always someone who's like, guys, you know, he sprints in. Guys, oh, thank God I, st I came here in time. Don't be fooled. You can buy a simple utilitarian folding knife and it can do all of the same things. Thanks. Why did you sprint here? We know that. Believe it or not, people who buy this stuff, for the most part, understand this. You generally graduate into the weird after experiencing the utilitarian setting. Artisan Color does a good job with this. They can obviously make a premium utilitarian folder when they want to, and they can also make something that's premium and also intentionally ridiculous and intentionally cumbersome, intentionally inconvenient, ironically inconvenient, just to tickle the fancies of uh, people like us, right? Um, I'm happy that this exists. I think it's great, but, you know... <laughs> I think I think that this this realization is um you know speeding up this realization for some people is is beneficial right the the quicker that you understand that this is you know intentionally done the easier it is the easier the rest of the knife world is because believe me much like an onion the knife world has many many layers and if this is hard for some people to comprehend or it makes them frustrated where they look at it as a teaching moment for an imaginary audience, buckle up, friends, uh, because the knife world gets substantially crazier than this, and it has been for a very, very long time. Um, the weight on this titanium one to move into, we kind of, we're kind of doing a, or a different thing uh, this time around because I've already reviewed this knife. I just haven't actually reviewed the titanium version, right? So... I wanted to do a couple of talking points there in the beginning. The weight of this titanium version is substantial. 10.62 uh, <laughs> ounces, right? Obviously. Um, no milling on the inside, as it should be, right? It's already ridiculous. Why not go ahead and just not mill it out? Who cares? The overall length of the proponent is... I think this is almost 9 inches. I'd say it's like 8.75 maybe. 
yeah, 8.75 blade length. At the base of the frame, it's four inches. At the middle of the frame, it's about 3.85. The cutting edge is just shy of three and a half inches. How about some size comparisons? Any custom scales you can find down in the description under Original Goat or Flytanium in the case of the 80, I'm sorry, Original Goat is the 8010, uh, but Flytanium would be like the, um, what do I have here, the Benchmade bug out? Yeah, lots of cool custom scales. How about these two? This makes a lot of sense. So it's really very similar in overall size to the 8010, it's just a little bit bigger. It's obviously titanic compared to the um, Benchmade Bug Out or the Hodeca. How about something like the Spyderco Para 3? How about something like, what do we got here? The Spyderco PM2, obviously bigger than these. And then finally, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogan. What do we have not done yet? The Demco AD 20.5. Action is also phenomenal, but it always has been. And I think it's, I mean, Artisan Cutlery is definitely getting better about pivot action. But, I mean, let's be real here. This is a huge blade. Uh, it's tall. It's not like the thickest blade in the whole world. And I've got a knife that has a blade stock of nearly a half an inch. Why? Why, you ask? Well, I've kind of already answered that question. It, because it's ridiculous. Um, the... Uh, Blade stock thickness of this, we need a new battery, 185,000. So this is about XM24 thickness, definitely on the thicker side. But because of the height of the blade and the angle, right, that, that tapers down to the cutting edge, what you're left with is actually a blade that is plenty capable of slicing. Now, the thicker the material, the more, I guess, abrasive, the, the more friction that's caused by the material, the harder it's gonna be to push that wedge through that material. Because of the ridiculous high polish, though, <laughs> It is reducing the drag, the tactical drag, <laughs> as much as possible, which is a benefit of a high polish finish on top of the fact that, you know, you gain additional corrosion resistance, which in this case is just a cherry on top because S35VN is already corrosion resistant. This is a Dirk Pinkerton design. If you guys don't know, I'm sure many of you do. How are they heat treating the S35VN? The same way they heat treat their M390, 59 to 61, which is fine. That's it's okay. I mean, I kind of like M390. I would prefer that S35VN be 60 to 62, but that is a preference. I don't have an issue. Um, I think M390 technically does have a higher optimal zone, but you know, geometry plays a bigger role in performance. And in this case, it's hard to say if the geometry is hindering it or benefiting it. I guess it really depends on what you're cutting. Um, that thumb barrel is slightly in the cutting path, um, but you know, I don't know. It's for people who are actually going to carry this thing. It's a lot. It's a lot of knife to dedicate to. And unless you have been used to, you know, carrying around, um, you know, big clunky cold steel knives, which I'm sure plenty of people in here are. Anytime you do a thumbnail, you know, of a big knife or anything dares challenge the legacy of a cold steel knife, which, you know, Cold Steel fanatics are apparently under the impression they are some sort of secret club that bears the wisdom of like, you know, 10,000 years of knife research. No, you, you can literally go anywhere on the internet and just buy a Cold Steel knife. It's not a secret club. They don't cost that much money. It's, it's, they're not, it's not special. They're, they have a really strong lock. They're available to everybody. You don't need to be a super secret ninja wizard level 9,000. To, to own one. You, you can just go buy one. Like you can literally just go to Blade HQ and be like, hey, Blade HQ, I have a money. Can I have a cold steel? And Blade HQ will be like, yeah, sure, bro. Here you go. It's uh, here's here's the cold steel. There you go. So, but they're here because um, they want to make sure that everybody knows that nothing is quite as powerful as a cold steel knife. They, of course, are bearers of this wisdom and they've done all the, the research. And by research, I mean, watched a YouTube video and then bought the knife. <laughs> <laughs> Cold steel knives are great, but stop taking yourself so seriously. <laughs> it's just, it's, that's why there's so many memes. Um, the, uh, you know, the difference here is that you, you've got a knife that's substantially larger, substantially less convenient, and is just substantially heavier. And there's an extra step that you have to take um, to, you know, lock this thing out completely and totally, which, you know, at that point, I'll give it to the cold steel triad lock, which is on this 8010. It, it's actually a little bit more convenient if you really, I mean, if you really are about to beat the crap out of a knife, it's actually a little bit easier to uh, engage and disengage something like this because there's really just one step, right? Now, 
whether or not you'll actually need that much strength on a daily basis? Hmm. Should we should we look into that question? No, because the answer is you won't the vast majority of the time. And I mean like maybe once in one lifetime, maybe. You might have to go through two lifetimes before the average person will actually need the full strength of something like the triad lock. That's marketing. Very, very good marketing. And it got a hold of a lot of us. Um, you know, I, I can't pretend it didn't get me. This is kind of a stream of consciousness review, isn't it? Um, but I mean, yeah, elements of that get a hold of us. Why did I attach titanium scales to this? Because I think that it makes it more durable. At one point I did a long time ago. Now, no, I just like that it feels heavier and looks cooler in my opinion, right? And sometimes that's really what it's all about. How cool do you think it looks? How much do you enjoy it, right? Whether or not it actually translates to some sort of I mean, in most cases, imaginary level of utility is just kind of out the window, right? Um, you can buy whatever you want for whatever reason. I uh, truthfully have just been so thoroughly impressed with the evolution of artisan and culinary and knives and seeing their ability to do something like this. It really just – it checks all those enthusiast boxes for people who like stuff like this, right? Um, I don't know that there's really a whole lot more that I can say about this that needs to be said. I, uh, I suppose, oh, we're almost 20 minutes now. I, I suppose, uh, my message to artists and cutlery is you guys are clearly capable of doing finishes that we do not see at this territory. Um, I mean, I, I challenge you to find a finish that looks as nice on a premium knife at this price point anywhere in the knife world, right? You're not going to see it. The closest you're going to come is a regular tumbled finish or a belt satin finish. This is much higher reflectivity, right? Uh, belt satin would be like the Spyderco PM2, obviously more reflective, right? Uh, a tumbled finish, something like the Demco AD 20.5, again, substantially more, right? Um, they're clearly able to do this on a number of different steels. Now, I would imagine it still costs them a lot of money, but I will remind everybody that they did used to sell a uh, titanium proponent for right around 200 bucks with just a standard finish. And this was before all of the inflation occurred. So by utilizing deductive reasoning, I would say that it doesn't cost them very much to apply this finish. Um, I, uh, with, with that in mind, I would really like to see you guys start doing this on a lot of stuff, including some of your budget stuff, right? Um, it won't surprise me if it costs a little bit more, but they're clearly capable of doing it. If they can do this to S35VN, that's as hard as it is, they can definitely do it to ARRPM9 and whatever other steels they like to use, right? I mean, they mirror polished S90V. So they can clearly do this. I would very much like to see this on a lot more stuff. I saw it on um, one of the Pyrite models a while back, this one, and at least one other knife, and it just blows me away every single time. I'm a sucker for a good finish. It really drives the value point home, even if it doesn't rip. I, I venture it does. It does cost them a little bit more, right, to finish it like this. But it couldn't be that much. So if you can do this, do it. Uh, do it on a lot of stuff. That would be really, really cool. Um, is this knife recommendable? If you like big, crazy, aggressive titanium frame locks that are, you know, obviously very self-aware in design, yes, this is very good. This is great for 200 bucks. If you are leaning more on the side of utility, that's really the area of the knife world that you enjoy, then no, obviously not. <laughs> But it is cool, and it um, it really uh, th this unboxing this and looking at it, I was like, man, it really was kind of that moment where I realized artisan color is is at a different level, a substantially different level than they they used to be. So that's it. This is a weird upload, um, but I I just uh, this this created a good talking point for me, and uh, I hope you guys kind of I hope this is translating. This is this is really fun. I will link artisan color knives in general down below as well as this new proponent. Um, that's going to be pretty much it today. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. 
Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.